Alright guys, Tom here and welcome to a new video and today I'm bringing you my WWE TLC 2014 review. WWE TLC was the last pay-per-view of WWE's 2014 calendar. Everything was on the line. This was WWE's opportunity to end 2014 on a high, end the year with a bang. It's been a great year for the WWE. The network came about. We had Daniel Bryan overcome the odds at WrestleMania 30 to become the champion. Batista returned. CM Punk left. He had the streak being broken. Brock Lesnar winning the world title, Sting debuting in the WWE, and that's only a few things I can remember. It's been a huge year for the WWE. This was the last pay-per-view, so really, they wanted to end the year on a very big high. With NXT R Evolution in midweek, it was all that more important for WWE to deliver on the big stage tonight on the pay-per-view. Do I think they delivered? They were okay. It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't terrible. There were some pretty good bits, but there was also some really, really boring bits. And there's one thing I really want to stress about this pay-per-view, and it is that it is pretty much the main talking point of what I think this pay-per-view was all about. And the big problem with this pay-per-view was that they booked all these gimmick matches. Yes, it's great you have a chairs match, a tables match, a TLC match, a ladders match, Every stipulation or every gimmick match they've got, they pretty much put it on this show. It's TLC, and that's pretty much what they're going to do. But the problem is, they can do all these matches, but at the end of the day, if we don't care about the feud, we're not going to be invested in the match, we're not going to care for the match, and we're going to find the match boring. So I found for 80% of the matches on this match card, yes, they had cool stipulations, they had tables matches, Everything like that, but there was only about two of the matches I actually cared about. So the rest of the show, even though they had great stipulations and on paper sounded awesome, when we actually watched it, were you actually that bothered about what happened in the end? Because I sat there for a majority of the pay-per-view thinking, I really don't care what that ha what happens at the end of this. And I felt quite bored watching a majority of these matches because simply they were meaningless feuds. They hadn't really had a lot of time to be built. Yes, they've only had three weeks to build this pay-per-view, but that's their fault. Why are they booking so many pay-per-views in one year? And also, well, basically, there was hardly any feuds we could get invested in. There was hardly any match we really cared about. Pretty much, there was only two matches on this card anybody really bothered about anyway. So yes, you can do all these gimmicks, but if we don't care about the feud... We're not going to find the match entertaining. And I thought that was a big talking point of this show was, did you find it entertaining? Because the majority of these matches meant nothing. Nothing at all. None of this is going to progress. Nothing that happened here. Hardly anything is productive at all. And some of the matches weren't even actually that good, even though they were gimmick matches. So we're actually going to start off with the kickoff show. And I... Once again, I come at the end of every pay-per-view and say, I'm not going to watch the kickoff show at the next pay-per-view because it always sucks. But once again, I find myself watching the kickoff show. And it was the New Day's first pay-per-view match. Can you call it a pay-per-view match when it's on the kickoff show? Apparently you can nowadays against Gold and Stardust. Now, once again, this is one match we don't care about. Why is this match happening? Wasn't really explained. Why have they, Why are they in a feud? What have they got going between each other? I have no idea, but apparently they don't like each other. Oh, we got this match on the kickoff show. I'm waiting for that time when there's actually a match on the kickoff show, which means something. I mean, I think, I think you'd have to go back about two years before you find a feud on the kickoff show, which actually means something, because every match we have on the kickoff show is completely irrelevant and doesn't do anything. And I guess that really sums up the booking nowadays is that they have so little booking and so little feuds going on that they have to put it all on the pay-per-view because they have so little feuds that they can't waste it on a kickoff show because, once again, we have to sit through a kickoff show which means absolutely anything. And this is pretty much like every match on the show. But this match was actually... Okay, I actually quite enjoyed this match. I thought it was pretty good and I, I i i really like the ending i thought it was i thought it was solid and i definitely think that 
Both teams had a good showing, and I, I think they worked okay. I thought they worked good. I don't really have a lot of complaints about this match. Now, the big complaint I have about this match is the New Day are never going to get over. Never going to get over. I think a lot of fans are frustrated that the New Day are a thing now. I think they feel like Kofi and Big E especially are being wasted on a faction which really isn't going anywhere. They feel like they could do a lot better if they were singles competitors. Also, the big question point is, what the hell is this gimmick? They're called the New Day. The New Day of what? They wear blue. What's that for? Why are they all black? What is it? What, what, what's the message they're spreading? No idea. Why do they have people singing on their, on their entrance song or on their entrance video? What, what is the gimmick? We, we don't, what, what is it? How can we relate to a gimmick? We don't know what it is. What, what, somebody explain what the fuck it is. I have no idea what the message they're spreading, what the point of them is. What are they doing? What is this all, what's the ideology behind this tag or faction? No idea. The gimmick doesn't make sense. I, I, I feel Kofi and Biggie would be a lot better and a lot more over if they were on their own. Because how can the fans be expected to get behind a gimmick which isn't relatable or doesn't really make sense and something we don't really want to like anyway when we prefer Kofi and Biggie especially as singles competitors. And the big gripe I have about this match is the fans are already turning on the new day. Because when Goldust got a, 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 a... When Stardust hit his disaster kick and nearly got a pinfall, the crowd booed when one of the new... I think it was one of the new day members saved the matchup for his team. The crowd booed because they don't like this new day gimmick. They're already starting to turn on it and it hasn't been around for more than a month. I mean, people are already... Not into this tag team. They're supposed to be cheered. And they were getting booed. Because they saved the matchup for their team. That's not very good going is it? People are already turning on this tag team. And it hasn't even been around for a month. Now I really hate these kickoff shows. Because they're really predictable. The obvious outcome was. For the New Day to win this match. It was their first pay per view match. Obviously they're wanting to get the momentum here. And win the match. And that's exactly what's happened. They had a bit of a... Uh, uh, a mistake on the on the actual ending because Kofi went for a double tag team move with Big E, which looks pretty good, by the way. That's apparently their finisher. Big E went for the pin. He wasn't the active man. The referee shouts to him, Kofi's active. So Kofi had to do the pin instead. That was a bit of a mix-up, but the New Day got the win. It was a solid match. It was decent. It was okay. Not much complaints. Obviously, the right team got the win. If you're thinking about progression-wise, the New Day... They would have wanted the win. They're a new team. They want all the momentum right now. Obviously, they needed the win. They're just establishing themselves as a new team. Big gripe that the fans are already starting to turn on them. Not really sure how we can get behind a gimmick when it doesn't really make sense. What's their message? We don't know. They just wear blue for some reason. They wear capes. Doesn't really make sense. I don't really know what it is. Golden Stardust, they were the tag team champions only a couple of months ago, and now they're jobbing on the kickoff show. Oh no, I really like Golden Stardust, but they're not really doing a lot at the moment, which is a really, really big annoyance. Anyway, for that match, I'll give it a thumbs up. The TLC pay-per-view gets underway. We had a pretty successful kickoff show, but what was more successful was the video package which started the TLC pay-per-view. I really like this video package. It was very well edited. They had cars crashing. Oh, the soundtrack was awesome. The voiceover was great. The clips they used was good. I never really mentioned the video package, but I actually thought this was a really good video package. They usually are pretty good, but this really got me pumped for the show. I thought that video package was great. I might actually go watch it back again. Just a little thing I noticed. It, it, it was a cool little promo at the start of the show. and really summed up the whole night that it was going to be a big, big show. Anyway, I think the number one match they could have had to kick off this show was the show that they chose. Ziggler against Luke Harper for a ladder match. That's the number one match that I would have chosen to start my pay-per-view if I was booking this show. What a match to get the crowd 
really, really, really loud. It was in Cleveland, Ohio. That's Dolph Ziggler's hometown. It, the, the hometown really was behind Ziggler. Ziggler's super over anyway, but place him in his hometown. And wow, he was super over. So what a great move to get the crowd really, really hot at the start of the show. The, 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 the first match has to be the match which gets the crowd Really, really pumped for the rest of the show. And they chose that match very well. A ladder match, fantastic. Everybody wants to see that. So a very good choice for the first match on the show. Ziggler, super over right now. Probably has the best momentum in the company right now. Obviously, great choice to have this match start the show. We all wanted to see this match. I think it was down for one of my contenders for match of the night. The match was... Pretty good. I think, uh, thinking about it now, it probably was about the third best match on the show. I think Cena and Rollins is just ahead of it in terms of entertainment-wise. And Bray Wyatt against Ambrose was slightly better. But it was a, a solid match, a very, very good match. I think Ziggler's had better matches. But I think they actually had some very, very good spots in this match. You're going to have to go back and watch it because there was a lot of spots which happened during this match. The key moment was when I thought Luke Harper had actually broken his arm. It like twisted when he did a suicide dive. I mean, this match was great. The crowd absolutely loved it. They popped every time Ziggler jumped up that ladder. I mean, it was brutal. Both guys were bleeding. Really, really good pacing. I think I think they 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 gelled really, really well. Very surprised how well Luke Harper did in this ladder match. It was his first ladder match, but it, you you wouldn't have been surprised. You would you wouldn't have guessed it because it was a great match. It was a very very good match, a really really good opener, and I'm even more impressed that Ziggler won the title. I mean, I think that was a great booking decision. Slightly disappointed that Luke Harper's dropped the title after only just winning it about a month ago, but Ziggler's super hot right now. Obvious decision to win it in his hometown. A great reaction. A great highlight. I mean, you're going to watch that over and over again. Ziggler winning the Intercontinental Championship on top of the ladder in his hometown. I mean, that was a really, really good moment and a key moment to start the show. It made me really happy to see that. Looked awesome. Great decision. I mean, you can complain that Luke Harper lost this match, which isn't great. I mean, the fact that Ziggler won in a ladder match sort of doesn't mean Luke Harper loses as much momentum. I think if Ziggler had pinned Luke Harper, it would have maybe uh, stalled Luke Harper's momentum more than it did. I think a ladder match kind of protects a superstar a little bit more nowadays. Ziggler winning, great decision. A little bit disappointed that it might stall Luke Harper's momentum in the long run. Not sure where Luke Harper's going to head from now. And I think maybe a lot of people are questioning whether Dolph Ziggler's better than the Intercontinental Championship. Are, are people thinking he's better than that mid card? Are people thinking he's better than this title? That he should be he should be sniffing at Brock Lesnar's title at this point? How much he's over? I mean, is this guy the most over babyface in the company? And he's walking around with the mid card championship. I mean, I'm not sure. I think it might be their WWE's fault for booking him in this match. I mean, as soon as they booked him in this match, they had to have him win because of how over he is. But him winning, is that going to make him less over because he's just won the a mid-card championship, which a lot of people don't really care about? I'm not sure. If he, is it, is it a really a positive for Ziggler to win this title when a lot of people are thinking, he's better than this. He, he, he should be right up there with the world title at the moment. Is this going to actually stall Ziggler's momentum by winning this? I'm not sure. Watching the match, it was great. Really good, they gave it plenty of time, very entertaining, both guys were bleeding, I like the blood because it adds a little bit of legitimacy to the match, I loved it, the crowd loved it, some really really good spots during this match, a ladder match, who doesn't like a ladder match, this was a great match, I really wanted to see this match and when it ended, I was quite sad because I, I want to see that match again, so I'm going to give it a thumbs up, great decision for Ziggler to win, but is it going to be great in the long run, are you guys thinking, hmm, is Ziggler better than this? Well, time will have to tell, but a thumbs up from me. One match which I didn't think I was going to be giving a thumbs up to the to, uh, at the end of this show was the Usos defeating The Miz and Damian Mizdow by disqualification. Yep, you read that right. The Miz and Damian Mizdow actually got defeated by The Usos by disqualification. I mean, big shock. I don't understand the booking behind this, why The Usos defeated The Miz and Damian Mizdow by disqualification. It was a really, really, really shitty finish. Now, actually, my girlfriend was watching this with me. I gave her my network password, and she really wants to get into wrestling, because I like it, 
and she wants to like it as well. So she actually watched this with me, which I thought was really cool. But she actually s sent me a message or a text that uh, when this match had finished, and she was like, I hope you don't get offended by this. But that was a really shit finish. I mean, even she knows that was a shit finish. It was really crap. I mean, the match was a lot better than I expected. I found it fucking... and I found it really, really entertaining. I think the Usos performed a lot better than they have in the last few months. I thought The Miz and Damien Mizdow, especially The Miz, performed a lot better than he usually does. Now, I, at Survivor Series, I think it was, I said that Miz, Mizdow... Takes away a lot from the match. He's a big distraction and he doesn't add a lot to the actual entertainment or the product. But a month later at this pay-per-view, I'm thinking this guy's got the best freaking gimmick in the company right now. He's so funny. He's so entertaining. He's absolutely hilarious. I mean, oh my god. I don't know why I'm finding this guy amazing right now, but oh my god. Damien missed out was freaking hilarious, especially when the Miz was uh, the Usos actually lifted the Miz vertically in the air, and the Miz did exactly the same on the on the side on the on against the against the turnbuckle. That was hilarious. The Usos were entertaining. They've been quite quite dull for the last few months, but they had a good showing. The Miz performed a lot better than he usually does. Damien Miz out is more over than ever. All in all, this match was really entertaining, except for the finish. If they had a clean finish here, this would have been a really good match. I thought it was a decent match. I mean, there might be people sat there saying, oh, this wasn't a very good match. Yes, this match means nothing. The feud doesn't make sense. Why is this match happening? But it was a solid match. I'm going to give it that. It was a solid match, and it was pretty good. Except the ending. Why are they protecting the Usos? Why are they having the Miz and Damien Mizdow? Hit the Usos with the Slammy Award. I mean, is this to give The Miz heel heat? He's already quite... He's already getting a lot of heat anyway. Are, are they trying to protect the Usos? Are they trying to protect another tag team? Are they thinking, if the Usos are defeated clean here, what's left for The Miz and Damian Miz now? Are they thinking, we need more tag teams in this division so we can't have The Usos lose cleanly? That's the only thing I can think here. I don't understand why, they, why they've protected The Usos here. I don't understand because I think the obvious decision is to have the new day against the Miz and Damien Miz out of the Rumble. But from this, it suggests that the Usos are going to face the Miz and Damien Miz in a rematch at the Rumble. Is that why they've done it? Have they got such a slim tag team roster they're going to have to do a rematch in five weeks for the same match we've just seen? Why are they protecting the Usos? I have no idea. No idea whatsoever. This didn't make sense. And it, it actually made it, it left a bad taste in my mouth because... I thought it was a solid match. I was actually surprisingly positive about this match. I thought it was pretty good. Ending fucking ruined it. I was really frustrated when that happened. So I'm going to give it a thumbs up. But what the fuck? Oh, you, you ruined it with that fucking ending. Wow, what the hell? Oh, my God. Especially on a pay-per-view. I want to see a clean ending to a match. And this wasn't the only non-clean ending to the match. There was a few non-clean endings to these matches, which was really annoying. Anyway, we're moving on to Big Show defeating Eric Rowan in a Steel Stairs match. I mean, oh my god. Retarded. I'm Michael Cole, and welcome to tables, ladders, chairs, and stairs. Oh my god. Who the, what, whose idea was it to add stairs into the TLC pay-per-view? I mean, the t TLC sounds a stupid name anyway. And then add stairs to the pay-per-view name. Oh, my God. Whose idea was this? This is ridiculous. I mean, stairs are a fundamental part of a wrestling match. They're in every match. You can hit an opponent with it. Well, you can throw an opponent into steel stairs in any match. But somebody's idea was to make a match where they hit each other with steel stairs. Great idea. Great idea. I mean, oh my god, this was stupid. I mean, uh, this is the first Steel Stairs match. And then they did like a, a tale of the tape about the Steel Stairs. If it's this like a magnificent, historic thing. 
It's a freaking steel stairs. You're just going to whack them around the head with it. Retarded idea. I'm not going to ponder a lot on this match because at the end of the day, really meant nothing. I mean, the result was absolutely retarded. I mean, you've got you've given Big Show the win here, which sort of is understandable. I mean, he's only just turned heel, so he would have been looking for that first win as a heel. But at the end of the day, Luke Harper lost. And he and he's just split away from the Wyatt family. And Eric Rowan lost. And he just split away from the Wyatt family. So, both ex-Wyatt family members lost on tonight's pay-per-view. Which isn't looking that great for the, Wyatt, uh, for the ex-Wyatt family members, is it? Now, Eric Rowan's the younger guy. He's got a lot left in the tank career-wise. Big Show is at the end of his career. Nobody cares about Big Show anymore. Heel turn after heel turn after heel turn. Nobody cares. So this win means nothing for Big Show. Nobody cares what he does. Nobody cares. But Eric Rowan, he's fresh, he's hungry, he's new. He's only just turned into a singles competitor. He needed the win a lot more than Big Show here, I believe. Big Show winning here does nothing for anybody. Nothing. The whole point of this match for me, I felt, was to put Eric Rowan over. But the fact that they haven't even put Eric Rowan over here is makes this match even more pointless than it really was. And a steel stairs match, oh, how dumb is that? I'm going to hit you with the steel stairs. The only cool point during this match is when Big Show speared Eric Rowan through a wall of steel stairs, which looked really fake anyway. I mean... I mean, that, that that did look stupid as well. At the end of the day, the finish was all right. I mean, Big Show put piled a stare on Eric Rowan's neck, which, at the end of the day, sort of makes, makes Eric Rowan look strong that Big Show had to stand and put steel stairs on over Eric Rowan to pin him. That makes Eric Rowan look quite strong, but if you wanted to make him strong anyway, you would have had Eric Rowan pick up the win. And it would have been better if you had Eric Rowan do, do that to Big Show instead of Big Show doing it to Eric Rowan. Eric Rowan needed the win more. Big Show. Who cares about Big Show at this point? Eric Rowan, he's new. You should have given him the win. And I hope this is the last Steel Stairs match ever because it did nothing for me whatsoever. So I'm going to give it a thumbs down. I thought it was quite dull. I thought it was quite boring. I don't really know why this feud really happened anyway. I don't really care. It's not going to do anything. This is the last match they'll probably ever have. Another match which really didn't... Nobody really cared about. And a match nobody could invest in. Because what's there to invest in? Now, one match I was invested in was the John Cena against Seth Rollins match. Because it's John Cena and Seth Rollins. They're two big names. One big shock was that they were so low on the card. I mean... There was three of the, well, four of the matches which happened after this. So, I mean, this was placed, this was placed after like the first hour and a half of the show, halfway through the show, which was a big shock. I mean, a lot of people were expecting this to main event the show and it's going on in an hour and a half or halfway through the show, which was a big shock, but also a great choice for Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose, where it gives them an opportunity to showcase what they can do in the main event. A lot of people are sick of John Cena winning the main event all the time. A lot of people are sick of seeing John Cena end a pay-per-view, celebrating a win all the time. Maybe that's why they did it. Maybe they, maybe they know that people are sick of seeing John Cena's hand being raised at the end of every pay-per-view. They knew that's what was going to happen at the end of this match, so they decided to book it not as the main event. But this match was actually pretty good. Now, I have no idea why this match was really booked. I mean, Seth Rollins and John Cena didn't really have any beef. I mean, I know Seth Rollins cost Cena the world title like three months ago. But it didn't really make sense for John Cena to now want a match against Rollins. Three months after it happened. So the creation of this match didn't really fundamentally really make much sense. It, am, am I the only one that thought that? I mean... Why all of a sudden is Cena wanting a match against Rollins? I mean, it, the night after Survivor Series, we suddenly had Cena against Rollins. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know why they are. I don't know why it happened. It was a pretty good match. Now, they decided to add the stipulation that if Cena lost, he would lose his world title match against Brock Lesnar. They only really added that to add it, make it a little bit more exciting and to make you believe Rollins might possibly win. But at the end of the day, who bets against John Cena to win? 
it was obvious John Cena was winning this match. There's no way that Cena's not going to face Brock Lesnar. That's what we've been building towards for the last, what, it seems like the last six months. Cena against Brock, the final match. We never got a real conclusion to their feud, and that's really what we're heading towards. So there was no question that John Cena wasn't winning this match. It was obvious. Obviously, John Cena was going to win this match. It's too short notice for John Cena to lose here and for them to find a new number one contender. Obviously, Cena was winning here, which slightly takes away from the match. Ugh, boring. Cena wins. Yay. Let's try and get excited about that. But at the end of the day, it was a decent match. And I think every match Cena's in, he almost seems to have like one of the best matches on the pay-per-view. I mean, you can't take it away from him. He really does. I mean, this is easily one of the, well, maybe like the, the second best match on the pay-per-view or maybe the best match on the pay-per-view. I think it might be the best match on the pay-per-view. I mean, it, it was really pretty amazing. It, it was decent. It was good. It was awesome. I thought it was great. Awesome match. And I, I really thought J&J Security, which is a fucking retard. J&J Security. What a fucking retarded name. Who thought of that name? J&J Security. Well. Sorry, who thought that name? I'm sorry. J and J. Has nobody ever thought what the fuck is that? J and J Security. Sounds like a like a chocolate bar or something. J and J. Oh. They 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 they're now moving towards the Big Red, the New Day, J and J Security, Damian Mizdow. I mean, what? Retarded names. Anyway, they, they really added to the match. I thought they really added a new dynamic to this match. And it was really kind of a soap opera style match. I mean, it was really entertaining. I mean, quite funny at times, but also really enthralling. I mean, you could not take your eyes away from this match. You never knew what was going to happen during this match. And they really added a great dynamic towards this match. Yes, the story WWE told here was John Cena overcomes the odds. We've seen it loads of times before. But for some reason, this felt a little bit more unique than the usual Cena overcoming the odds. I thought it was great. Period. I thought this was great. I thought this was fun, unique, interesting. You couldn't take your eyes away from it. And there was a lot of great things which happened in this match. Now, I think that the most epic thing which happened towards this match was when Cena put Rollins through a table. A great AA off the top rope. And then J&J Security... They pulled away. They pulled away Rollins, and then they pulled away the check. The reason why they did this was because the referee was down. The referee couldn't see what was happening. So obviously Cena should have won there, but the referee was down. So J and J Security removed the remnants of the table, so the referee didn't know that a table had been smashed. Cena also ended up putting both of them through a table. He actually did a double AA on J and J Security. That was a great highlight. That was awesome. And then when the referee actually got up, Rollins and Cena both went through the same tables, two tables, at the same time. So they then restarted the match. So we got, like, basically two matches, which was awesome. And then Big Show, for really no reason, nobody really commented on, on this, why Big Show came out. Big Show came out and attacked Cena. I don't know why that happened. That made no real reason Apart from the fact that maybe Reigns is going to face Big Show at the Rumble now, which really doesn't interest me at all, because we all know what's going to happen there. Reigns wins, yay. Sick of this predictable bullshit. But then, Roman Reigns comes out. I thought that was awesome, because I, I expected Orton to come out, not Roman Reigns. And I, I think the fact that Roman Reigns was on Raw in a suit masked the actual fact that he was ready to be in the ring. I think a lot of people forgot the fact Reigns was ready to step in the ring due to the fact that he was on Raw in a suit. He wasn't wrestling on Raw. He was in a suit receiving a slammy. I think we all forgot that maybe he might actually appear at TLC. Maybe he's actually ready. He's in ring ready to appear in the ring. I, it didn't cross my mind that he was. So I was like, wow, they really kept that hidden. Reigns is back. And he, the crowd popped. I'm going to be honest. I don't like this guy because I see him becoming Cena 2.0. He's been booked like that. He's quite cringy. But I, I think that was a great moment. I think the crowd absolutely popped. It was a great highlight. Something really to remember. 
I think the pot for Ziggler winning the World Intercontinental Championship was quite big. But I think Reigns coming out was maybe even bigger. This was great. Because then, when he got in the ring, the crowd popped even more. Because you had a put Superman punch to Big Show. And then a spear for a table. Which looked awesome to Big Show. I mean, that, that was awesome. And then, Reigns hit a Superman punch on Rollins. And then... Use that as a distraction to get AA'd by Cena through a table. Now, this was a great way to bring Reigns back, set up a match between him and Big Show, and have a really great pop. That's a re that's really going to get Reigns over. I heard there was talk to NXT R, R Evolution that Reigns got a little bit booed up on that show, but this is going to cement him down as one of the most over guys on the roster after that segment tonight on the pay-per-view. Oh, damn, it was awesome. I think I'm kind of into Reigns now. Oh, my God. No way. Anyway, um, yes. What happened? What happened? What happened? Yeah, I think this is a really good way to sell Big Show against Reigns to get Reigns over. I think it's a sort of good way to sort of bring back to life the Rollins and Reigns feud that we never really got to see. I also thought it was great in protecting Seth Rollins. Now, Rollins got beat. Now, it sort of protects Rollins because it was a tables match. If he got pinned by Cena, like I said about Luke Harper's match, it wouldn't have protect. It would have. It would. He would have lost momentum. But the fact that he's put for a table protects him a little bit more because it happens by surprise. It's not a clean. It is a clean win, but it sort of a pin's more of a dominant win. If you know what I mean, you can put anybody for. You can put anybody for a table and win a match, but. It's hard to put him down for the free pin. But I think they really protected Rollins here by the fact that Rollins needed to be Superman Punch and AA'd and put through a table to get beat. And he had to be Superman, Superman Punched by somebody that wasn't in the match to get beat. That was the story they were telling here and that protects Rollins quite well. But now we're heading towards Cena against Rollins. At Cena against Brock at the Rumble. I'm not sure if everybody wants to see that. But I think that's the lo next logical option. And, um... Phew, don't know who else they could have booked against Brock Lesnar anyway. So, I don't think there's much room to complain about. And I think this is a really good way to give some good heel heat to Rollins. Because you know his promo on tom tomorrow night's Monday Night Raw is going to be all about how Reigns cost him the match against John Cena. How he should have won the match anyway when they both got put through the table. Um, like that, I think I, I think this is going to be a good way to get Rollins over as well. How he's going to talk about how he should have won the match, how he got he he was stolen from him, even though he used J and J's curry a majority of the match. He'll say that Reigns cheated, and John Cena cheated because he got Reigns to help him. I, he, he's going to do something like that. It's going to be a good way to get some heel heat behind Rollins as well. But I, I was quite impressed they protected Rollins, and I thought that was a pretty good idea. Anyway, thumbs up from me. Probably the match of the night. Very, very good. The worst match of the night was Nikki Bella against AJ Lee. Nothing in this match. Nothing. No surprise AJ Lee lost here, considering what CM Punk said about the company in not one, but two podcasts with Colt Cabana. Yeah, there was no question Nikki Bella was retaining here. This feud means nothing. Irrelevant. Pointless. Who gives a fuck? We've seen AJ Lee against Nikki Bella before. We've seen him again at TLC. Nobody gives a fuck. We all knew who was going to win. The Divas division is dead. And arguably these are the... Well, AJ Lee's the, the best Diva on the roster. Nikki Bella might be... Fourth best Diva on the roster. But by God, this match sucked. There was nothing in this match. I've seen better matches on a Friday Night Smackdown... I've seen better Divas matches on WWE Superstars. I mean, this was nothing. I mean, it was really slow. Loads of breaks. Way too much time. Didn't tell a story. I can't even remember what happened. Oh, yeah, Nikki Bella sprayed AJ Lee with some kind of perfume or something in the eyes. Another unclean win, which shouldn't have really happened. I mean, why not just give Nikki Bella the clean win? You protected AJ Lee at Survivor Series with the kiss. Why are you protecting her again? I mean, I understand she's the most over diva, but if she can't perform at a, at, at, on a pay per view, like what? This match fucking sucked. She she didn't she didn't perform well at all. 
I mean, you should stop protecting AJ Lee and start building up some of the superstars instead of relying on AJ Lee all the time. Because AJ Lee just proved she doesn't have a good match every match or every time she's put out there. There's other divas on that roster we want to see and there's other divas that could have put on a better match than Nikki Bella and AJ Lee tonight. Because the WWE spend too long protecting AJ Lee and keeping her up there when there's a lot... Well, there's divas that could have easily put on a better match tonight. This fucking sucked. I want to move on because I'm wasting my time talking about this match, which meant nothing, was fucking awful. I mean, I, I, one of the worst pay-per-view matches this year. I mean, it got off to a really slow start. There was maybe one, two good moves. Apart from that, fucking nothing. Nothing. Uh, um, you might think I'm exaggerating. There was nothing. Jesus Christ, definitely a thumbs down. Nothing. I also don't understand why Brie Bella's now a heel now when Brian's going to be coming back soon and he's the top baby face. How's that going to work? I don't understand why Brie Bella all of, a, all of a sudden turned heel, even though they kind of fell out. I don't know. Doesn't make sense. The Divas Division doesn't make sense. Ugh. Right, we back defeating Kane was another really... Weird feud, which didn't make sense. They had no explanation why this match was happening. Does anybody know why this match was happening? I have no idea why this match was happening. I, I really didn't pay a lot of attention during this match. I've never really been a big fan of the steel chairs match. I mean, the concept is whack your opponent with a steel chair. I mean, I like my technical wrestling. Hitting someone with a steel chair doesn't really appeal that much to me. I don't know if that's anybody else's opinion, but... Not that interesting. Both guys walking around with a chair trying to hit each other. I mean, it doesn't get more dull than that. And, and this match was dull. There, there was nothing. I mean, Kane hasn't had a great match since maybe against Brian at Extreme Rules. Kane rarely has a good match nowadays. He's really slow working now. Yes, he's getting old. Nobody cares about him. He's like the, the least over heel in the company. His gimmick really is nothing anymore without the authority. I mean, nobody... I think Corporate Kane... Everybody wants to see Mask Kane, let's be honest. Corporate Kane was a terrible idea from the start. It never got over, really. No idea why Ryback doesn't like Kane. I don't like Kane. Why, why is that happening? Why does Ryback not like Kane? Why is this match happening? Why is this a steel chairs match? No idea. And it wasn't even a good match. I mean... They've got steel chairs. They could have done something cool. Didn't do anything. It was just nothing. Nothing at all. Ryback wins. Nothing to talk about. I, I can't remember anything that happened. I think somebody hit somebody with a chair. <laughs> Yeah, Ryback wins with the Shell Shock, which is a really annoying finisher, I find. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like Ryback should make his clothesline the finisher, which looks a hell of a lot better than lifting somebody up, walking around the ring, and dropping them. I don't know. I, I find Ryback's finisher a bit dull. I mean, we. I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much a Samoan drop or a, like an AA sort of thing. No, it's not that great. I'm not really that impressed with Ryback. Ryback. Anyway, this match sucked. Thumbs down. Why the hell was it on the pay-per-view? I have no idea. Great decision to give Ryback the win. However, how much it gives to Ryback, I have no idea. I mean, if you want to put somebody over, at least have a good match. It wasn't a good match. So I don't know how well this puts Ryback over. But Ryback wanted the momentum. He's the more over guy. He is making his way maybe to the main event level at this point. They're trying to get him to the level he was two years ago. And the only way he's going to do that is by picking up wins on pay-per-views. And they gave him the win over Kane. Kane only really puts people over nowadays. I can't remember the last time Kane had a win. Yeah, that was a really obvious match. I mean, it was boring. It was dull. It was a chairs match. You hit me, I'll hit you with a chair. Yeah, that sounds really fun. Um... And it was really predictable, so there was, like, nothing to get into to this match. How could anybody get into this match? How could anybody find this match exciting? I have no idea. Big, fat, thumbs down. 
maybe I was a bit harsh about Nikki Bella and AJ Lee's match. Because I find Rusev and Jack Swagger's match for the US title maybe the boringest match on the pay-per-view. Maybe they're tied with Nikki Bella and AJ Lee. The boringest match of the year award goes to Rusev and Jack Swagger or Nikki Bella and AJ Lee. Yes, um... This match only happened because Sheamus got injured. He was supposed to be facing Rusev at TLC, but Sheamus got injured. So they had to find a replacement. They found Jack Swagger. They tried to make a feud in the last couple of weeks between Rusev and Jack Swagger. They sort of failed. This match means nothing. It's not going to progress Rusev at all because Rusev's already had a win over Swagger multiple times. Rusev, once again, I really, really want to stress this. I really want to stress this. Rusev has not had a good match. Period. What? Seriously? I'm not I'm not even kidding. I, I might even make this a separate video and upload it. You might be even be listening to this as a video right now. Rusev, since he come in in April, has not had a good match. Uh, it really annoys me. He hasn't had a good match. He he's not entertaining. Ah! It makes me really frustrated that this guy's walking around with the US title. He's the most one of the most over heels in the company. He hasn't been defeated yet, but he hasn't had a good match. He is not entertaining. Has, uh, seriously, can anybody sit down there in the comment section and say you found one of his matches entertaining? Please comment which match from Rusev you found entertaining. The most entertaining Rusev match we've seen was when he won the title against Sheamus. And that wasn't even that good. This guy hasn't had a match over three out of five stars. He, he hasn't even come close. He's the most dullest character on the roster. It's not a unique gimmick. Him being the United States champion is not new. We've had many foreign heels winning the United States championship. He's very dull in the ring. He has a very, very basic move set. His promos with Lana are getting very boring. He hasn't evolved at all. It's the same guy we've seen in since he debuted in April. He beats Jack Swagger exactly what he did at SummerSlam. This match made no sense. It should have just been left off the pay-per-view. Rusev, once again, wins with the accolade. The same thing he's done for the last... Oh, eight months. This guy... Is fucking boring. He does nothing. He brings nothing new to the table. And the number one thing he doesn't bring is an entertaining wrestling match. I mean, what the fuck? He's not good. He hasn't had a good match. I mean, the, the majority of his matches is him rolling around on the floor. Ugh. His matches are so boring, they're so slow paced, they're dull, they're not entertaining, his feuds aren't interesting, he hasn't had an interesting feud for months, the booking is awful, he wins with the accolade every time, people are booing this guy because he's boring, they're not booing him because they hate him, and they're, they're not booing him because they're emotionally invested in his, in his character, it's because he's fucking boring! Fuck, he hasn't had a good match yet. And we're eight months into this guy's character, and he hasn't had a good match yet. When are they going to realise this guy's never going to put on a good match? Am I, like, the only guy that sees this? Oh, I still, I'm still really frustrated that they never gave Jack Swagger the win against Rusev at SummerSlam. I think that match was built for Swagger to win at SummerSlam. We all wanted Swagger to win. It would have been one of the highlights of the show. And would have been maybe the... Ooh, it could have made the show one of the best pay-per-views of the year. If Swagger had got the win over Rusev. But maybe four months, three months down the line, Rusev still undefeated... In the same match against Swagger, Swagger's nowhere near as over as he was at SummerSlam, which is just frustrating as well. And Rusev just beats him the same way he did at SummerSlam. So there's no progression there. Nothing's really changed in four months for Rusev. He's still doing the same thing. Really frustrating as a fan of wrestling to see somebody that doesn't progress. Oh, really annoying. So frustrating. Ah, oh. 
please, somebody help. Rusev sucks dick. Look, Lana sucks Rusev dick. Mm. Anyway, thumbs down. Big thumbs down. I don't want to see this guy on a pay-per-view again. Swag is better than Rusev. He's a much better performer than Rusev. Are people seeing things? Are they imagining things? Are they imagining this guy's entertaining? He's not fucking entertaining. Anyway, we move on to the main event of the evening. Bray Wyatt against Dean Ambrose. I'm not going to say they stole the show, but it was a good match. I think both guys have put on better matches. Bray Wyatt's match against John Cena at uh, Payback was better than this match. Dean Ambrose's match against Seth Rollins at Hell in a Cell was better than this match. Was this was one of the matches of the year? No. Was it a good match? Yes. But I think a lot of people felt like it could have delivered more than it did. I think they kind of relied too much on the big spots in the match rather than getting down and dirty and hitting a, a solid wrestling match. I think a lot of it was around the three Ambrose... Uh, jumping off the ladder. He, he, Ambrose jumped off the ladder about three times. I think a lot of the match was evolved around that. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is... It sort of relied on them three big spots. Which I can understand if you've got... Somebody who's not a good wrestler... In this. So if I'm looking at this match card and I see maybe... Ooh... It, it, say, say, say if you had, uh, who am I thinking? Maybe s- the Miz against maybe Ryback in this say in the same TLC match, and y- 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 sort of rely you'd sort of rely on big spots to make the match because they can't perform well enough to make a good match. So maybe you'd expect the Miz to go for a table, and you'd expect Ryback to jump off a ladder. And and that would kind of mask over the fact that they're not amazing performers. But I don't think Dean Ambrose really needed to do three big ladder spots to make a good match. Now, it sort of tells the story that they're both freaking lunatics and they're out of control and they'll do anything to be each other. I get that. But I think... I- me, for one, would have much rather seen Dean Ambrose and Bray Wyatt go one-on-one in the middle of the ring wrestling rather than throwing themselves through tables. I don't know. Am I being stupid there? Or am I... I I was sort of left a little bit disappointed at the end of this. I, I felt... It was a bit much. I think... Going... Was it three tables? Going through three tables is a little bit much. When it wasn't really needed. I'm not sure. I just didn't feel like they kind of delivered. If that's the right word. They didn't deliver. I think they, they, they perform a lot. They've performed a lot better than what they have. They, they've put on a lot better matches this year than they did tonight. And I don't, I don't know. I think they're better wrestlers than they showed in this match. And maybe that was to do with the spots they did. Or maybe the, the 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 timing they were given. I think that they've been given a big opportunity to perform in the main event here. They, they, they've closed the last pay-per-view of the show. Bray Wyatt's been given the opportunity to be the last guy. He, 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 he He's the last shining guy at the end of this show. He closed the show. He was the final picture of this show. Which puts a hell of a good spotlight on Bray Wyatt. But the big spotlight was on Ambrose and Bray Wyatt. Could they do a good 20 minute main event match at TLC yes they could they could have done one better though I I feel like they could have done better I think I'm going to have to go back and watch this match again but what I saw was two guys who could have performed a better match am I being stupid here or do you feel like they could have done a better match I'm not sure I think going into this match I felt like it could have been maybe the best match of the year but coming out of it, it was nowhere near the best match of the year. There's been a lot better matches this year. And some of the matches, even Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose have been in themselves. So, I don't know. And I thought the ending was really stupid as well. I mean, I thought it was kind of cool that they're 
their um there was a monitor under the ring. I don't really understand if that's a normal thing to do or they put this in during the match. But um well obviously they did, but um Ambrose brought it out and he was kind of admiring himself on a live monitor. Yeah, that was kind of funny. It was kind of an illusion because you, you just the picture went on forever because you could see the picture, the picture, the picture. Oh, that was pretty cool. But um, yeah, um, weird ending because Ambrose got in the ring with the monitor. He was just gonna, about to, you know, when they hit them around with the ring bell. He was going to do that with the monitor, but the monitor had a a wire obviously to the back of it where the feed was coming in and the, maybe the HDMI cable or something like that was connected to the TV, so he was just about to hit Bray Wyatt with the TV, the cord or the cable wasn't long enough, so Ambrose managed to pull the cord out of the TV and it exploded. That's the first time in my life I've seen a TV be unplugged and explode. Only in wrestling will you see a TV explode because it's been unplugged. Sparks, smoke, the lot. And the even stupidest thing was... It dazed Ambrose enough to get beat by Bray Wyatt. He was dazed enough. He pulls a, he pulls a cable out of a TV. It explodes. Sparks go off. Smoke goes in his face. He can't see where he's going. He gets Sister Abigail and get, gets beaten in the main event. If that happened at WrestleMania, there'd be uproar. I mean, that was the dumbest thing. That was the dumbest finish they could have done. I understand they want to protect Ambrose. Once again, they're protecting another guy. They protected Ambrose on this show. They protected Rollins on this show. They protected Eric Rowan on this show. They protected the Usos on this show. How many guys are they wanting to protect on this show? Give us a fucking clean finish. Seriously. No harm done by not protecting Ambrose here. He's already freaking over. You know, oh, I hate it in main events when they protect a guy. You want a clean finish at the end of a show. Especially Bray Wyatt who needed this win so much. I'm thankfully got it, but seriously, protecting Ambrose and the way they did it, I mean, wow. How unlegitimate do you want to get? A freaking TV explodes by pl- plugging a wire out of it. Now, if I plug the microphone out of my computer, it's not going to spark and make me dazed and not be able to see. I mean, dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. This was stupid. This ruined the whole show. No, it didn't ruin the whole show, but it was stupid as fuck. What the fuck were they thinking? I mean, you can imagine Vince thinking backstage, how can we protect Ambrose? I know, TV explodes in face. What? Whose idea was this? Stupid idea, they could have done anything. I mean, even they could have had Ambrose be chucked off a ladder through a table and had Bray Wyatt pin him. I mean, that's enough protection they need. He didn't even need protecting, let's be honest. Why do they have to have a monitor explode in his face to get distracted and then get pinned? I mean, dumb. Whose idea was that? A retarded idea. Are they, were they trying to be unique? It's just turned on them. That wasn't unique. That was retarded. Ugh. I'll give it a thumbs up, though, because it was a good match. Just the ending was weird. Weird. I don't understand the ending to that match. I also feel like they could have performed a hell of a lot better than what they did. But it was a good match. It was a, it was a hell of a lot better than the majority of the matches on this show. A lot of it was boring, so it did shine out as a star match on the show. Thumbs up. Overall, I'm going to give this pay-per-view a 6 out of 10, which is an okay score. Quite lenient considering what WWE gave us. The New Day against Goldust and Stardust, solid match. Not into, Star- not into the New Day, and quite disappointed Gold and Stardust are slipping, slowly slipping out of... Well, they're they're, they're going nowhere. They're doing nothing at the moment anymore. Ziggler against Luke Harper. Great match. Great reaction. Great result. Wow. Awesome. The Usos defeating the Miz and Damien Mizdal. Stop protecting, guys. Why protect the Usos? But it was a solid match. Big Show against Eric Rowan. Sucked. Cena against Rollins. Amazing. Nikki Bella against AJ Lee. Sucked. Rabak against Kane, sucked. Rusev against Sawaga, sucked. Bray Wyatt against Dean Ambrose, pretty cool. All in all, I feel like everybody on this on this roster, on this match card, sorry, probably could have performed better than they did. Maybe Barcena and Rollins and Harper and Ziggler, everybody else could have performed a lot better than they did. 
especially due to the fact that the success of the NXT pay-per-view earlier in the week, they could have put on a much better performance than I feel they did. Big Show against Derek Rowan could have been a hell of a lot better. Nikki against AJ Lee could have been a hell of a lot better. Ryback against Kane could have been a hell of a lot better. Rusev against Jack Swagger. I don't even know if Rusev could be any better. But all in all, I feel WWE needs to shorten up the amount of pay-per-views they have on a year. Three weeks is not enough time to build a pay-per-view. They also need to stop booking matches, which mean nothing. How can you expect us to buy a pay-per-view, invest in a match, if the match means nothing, the feud means nothing? You can't get... You can't throw tables and chairs in a match and expect us to get behind a match if we don't care about the superstar or we don't care about the feud. You can't. You can't expect us to enjoy a match if we're not invested in the characters or we're not invested in the feud or the outcome. You also need to stop making the matches predictable. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of, I think it was seven or... 7 or 8 out of 9 of the matches correct tonight. The Miz and Damian Mizdal technically won. So I got 7 out of 8 matches predicted right tonight. Ridiculous. Too predictable. Really irrelevant matches. Step up WWE. This was not a way to end your 24 team. Share this video on Twitter. I really, really wish you could. Follow me on Twitter as well. One of my tweets tonight got 280 retweets. You need to check that out as well. So follow me on Twitter. And the biggest thing you can do tonight is subscribe. You've already watched TLC. So why not go one step further and subscribe to the Tom Kushner YouTube channel. Also, like the video. Comment what you thought about the show. You can review every match with a rating. Or just rate the show yourself. Give it a mark out of 10. What do you guys think about TLC? I gave it a 6 out of 10. Did you, feel Bray White and D Did you feel Bray White and Dean Ambrose delivered on the stage in the main event? Because they've done a lot better. Were you surprised how good Rollins and Cena's match was? All in all, it was okay. Could have been a lot better. For me, it's a goodbye. As always, take care. Spike your hair.